<clears throat> oh, looks like we are live. Oh, let me just reorganize this up a little bit. All right, I uh, just got to quickly share this to a group. Uh, share it there. Posted. Perfect. Oops. Now I can't get back to the Facebook. Come on, there we go. Alrighty. Uh, now I'm not too sure if which audio is working, whether or not it's coming through my headphones, which I think it is. Um, just need... Lee, can you let me know that you can hear me? I'm not too sure. I guess I'll work it out in a moment. But uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. So uh, to another LWA live chats. Uh, so tonight, when he jumps on, I'll see him here soon. Um, we have Reese jumping on to share his story. Um, so super excited about this. Um, I hope, I hope everyone who's been all right, fantastic. Thanks, Lee. Um, I hope those, whether or not you're tuning in for the first time or whether or not you've been watching some of the ones over the last week uh, or two, um, hope my motive and my desire with all of these is to share some value and just um, shine some light on different topics and allow people to be able to uh, share and inspire, well, share their story and inspire um, others that are watching and you know, hopefully that there's somebody maybe watching in the background that is just simply sitting back, maybe not uh, participating too much when it comes to social media or whatever it is in general, and just hoping that my desire here is that there's a piece of information that really hits your heart and you just know that maybe you're not alone as well. Um, that perhaps, you know, what you're going through right now, other people have gone through and that you know, it's okay and that ultimately you're going to get through it. And that's where, you know, I'm very, very grateful for all of the guests who've been jumping on over the last number of weeks. Um, and I've got more coming as well, um, but super grateful for them. And tonight is going to be no different when it comes to Reese jumping on. Um, I'm so grateful that, that they are prepared to come on a, a live social media platform with myself. I'm truly, truly honored by that. And the fact that they are willing to share their story in a very vulnerable and an open way. Uh, because I know that that's something that is not overly comfortable for some people. Uh, so I am very appreciative. And I am, uh, yeah, don't take it lightly at all. So without further ado, read off. technology it's telling me he's adding him hey there he is how's it going good mate good doing well doing well so as i was just sharing you may or may not have heard um you know i appreciate you coming on um i guess one of the big things yeah. is the fact that you know we we barely even spoken we connected after i had a <laughs> had a chat with blaze and uh you shared some of your story and i was like wow there is so much value and wealth of uh, knowledge in there that other people can be inspired by. And I really do appreciate you stepping out here. And um, as you said, possibly one of the first sort of like live online <laughs> chats that you've had. <laughs> I don't take that yeah, lightly. This, this would, yeah, this, this would be the first, um, first time I've actually shared my story over a Facebook Live on a social media platform. Um, I've shared it with a couple of other people before, but it's it's a step up for me at the moment, so. Mate, well, I, and I am truly grateful for you actually um, inviting me on, to be honest, to step out of my comfort zone, to share my story and hopefully um, touch some people's hearts and help them out. Well, as you were just saying that it's the first time that you've stepped into, a, I guess, a, Facebook, a, a live social platform. Like I was just full of goosebumps and tingles right then as you were just saying that. So again, mate, I really do appreciate it. No, that's sweet, man. I, I'm I'm actually really glad to be here. Like I said, it'd be good to like step out of my comfort zone and share my story in the hopes that it does touch other people's hearts and really do help them out. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I have no day, doubt that's what we're that's what we're all here for. Absolutely, hundred percent. And I have no doubt that, um, as I was saying at the very very start, I don't think you were on at the time, but just that my my intent with these is that there's people who are going to just be watching and, and not necessarily commenting or anything like that but that if something that gets shared in this conversation um 
you know, just really sits home with them and just allows them to know that they're not alone and uh, they too can get through it, then, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the, the job's done as far as um, my intent with these conversations. So, And so, sometimes, like you say, that's that's all that, all that matters. Man. If you, like, because you know that I, um, through the story I share with you, that being in that place, just knowing that someone else had already been through that, it gave me the strength to push push past it and get so get to where I am now. Mm. I think that's a perfect lead in. So do you want to jump in and start wherever you feel called to start? Let's, okay, uh, well, let's get into it. Um, so I'm Reese. I'm 26 this year, um, turned 27 in December. I, up until about October last year, I fought depression on and off for about 10 years. Um, went in and out of suicidal thoughts continuously. Um, didn't have any self-worth in my like, personal worth, self-love. Spent so much time going out and chasing things and the, the more money to make myself feel better, all that sort of stuff. Um, used to drown my sorrows on the weekend like most 18-year-olds did in alcohol and a lot of it, unfortunately. Um, to the point where most people could probably consider me as an alcoholic. Um, I could spend, I could do pre-drinks, finish off a bottle of rum, and then go out and spend anywhere between 300 to 1,000 bucks in a night, um, which is no way really to live. But mm -hmm. I used to do those things to sort of show off and to drain, drown my pain and like to not feel anything basically and just to sort of get an, get acceptance in a way that – realistically didn't make me feel any better anyways um so fast forward to 21 and um after going through all that i finally stopped like started to slow up on my drinking um i a lot of my friends actually sort of disappeared just after my 21st birthday um lost complete contact with a lot of them um so that that sort of ruined me a lot more put me in a bit more of a hole um and sort of started acting out with other bits and pieces and just wasn't generally happy and just sort of ran through life numb, basically, not really having any clue as to what I was doing to other people, what I was doing to myself. Um, and that ultimately showed up really heavily last year um, as my partner of five years decided to leave me. Um, I was getting ready to propose to her and everything like that. So that really hit home for me. Um, and a year prior to that, I actually ended up going bankrupt. So I basically went from having most things that most 24-year-olds dream about. Um, I had a good partner. Um, I was living out of home. I've got a couple of nice old cars. I was making 70 grand a year, company car, company phone, second in charge of a company for the waterproof and a joint ceiling. Yep. And basically I had the best security you could possibly ever want in a job to the point where my boss had turned to me and said, there's no way you can get fired. So that's like ultimately what everybody wants, but deep down I still wasn't happy. Um, and then obviously I went bankrupt. Then my partner left me um, because of that. I couldn't afford to live outside of home anymore by myself had to move back in with my folks. So I pretty much went from being in a really good spot to basically rock bottom. And as soon as I hit that, I realised that there was something that needed to change because it was obviously something in me that I, I finally started to see that I was actually portraying on other people. Um, so I was walking around being all miserable and then that was wearing off on other people and then they started to be that to me and then I got, I got really angry at them and then eventually mm -hmm. distanced myself from them. And that was my way of coping with what I was going through was I would just distance myself from everybody and hide, hide away. And then ultimately that ended in everything just falling apart for me. Um, yeah. But the one thing that sort of helped me was um, one, of, one of my uncles gave me a call one day and basically said, like I said earlier, that, He's been through that same stuff. He's been through it. There's light on the end of the tunnel. You can get through this and was just there, 
not to tell me how to do it, not to guide me or anything like that, just to literally say that if I if like that he's been there and if I need to talk to anybody, I need to release any any bad or sadness, I can just give him a call. And that's all it took for me to start realising that I can push past it. Um, my biggest thing is like once he he called me that that whole concept in my head that you get told all the time is that once you hit the bottom, there's only one way to go and that's up. Mm. And I really I really took that to heart and just spent I probably spent oh maybe about. 10 grand on myself just this year trying to develop myself to get myself out of that hole and to help other people yeah, in that sense huge. build up. Um, and so yeah, with, like I said, man, I've done. Yep. I was going to say with the, so there's so many like absolute gold nuggets in what you've just shared. Um, one that stands out to me at the moment is that point where you really take ownership Um because it's so easy to blame everybody else when things aren't going right. And uh, I don't know how that sort of showed up for yourself, uh, but at what point did you actually stop and go, wait, no, I'm responsible for this? Well, basically, um, I f like, I just got to a point where I figured um, with everything falling away from me, there must have been something that was that I was participating in to cause that. Like mm. you don't just all of a sudden lose everything for no reason. There's got to be a reason behind it. So I just, the way I am, I like to know everything and why something's gone wrong. So I get really, I start asking questions and I started asking myself questions. Of why did this happen? I started looking backwards and started drawing into self, self development, which then ultimately led me to the idea of that, um, Everyone is responsible for their own actions. doesn't matter if someone's caused you to act that way. You're still responsible for the way you acted in that situation. So as soon as I heard that, I started looking back on my life and seeing what, what caused that and what I was, what, my, what actions I took that actually eventuated in that result. And then that's when I started to realize that, yeah, it was like even though certain things – weren't always my fault to start with. I still was participating in that for it to start to partly be my fault as well. So in a way it got to a point where I started just taking a hundred percent of the blame for everything that I was doing because nobody control can control my actions. Only I can. Yeah, that's, that's huge. And it takes, it takes a lot to really get to that point and actually acknowledge that because the ego is just all about, no, it's not my fault. It's everybody else's. And, everything to that effect. And uh, like, I want to highlight that quite strongly because it, you, it can be very easy to be going through life, blaming out everything else. And um, as you said, one of the big shifts for yourself was really asking powerful questions to yourself as to how is, uh, where is it showing up and why is it showing up? Um, yeah. And is that where, would you pinpoint like that is really kind of the pinnacle moment where everything started to turn around for yourself? Yeah, basically, um, that was the biggest, the biggest thing that actually s switched my mindset um, mm. was I started asking questions. It's it's the one thing that people don't usually do. I I asked the question to myself, what happened? Why did it happen? And then it made me look back on it. And then by doing that, it actually allowed me to open up more about what I was going through in my own head because I started to realise where I was at in life. Yeah. Um, like, but when you're when you're going through that depressive state, you're in such a numb a numb state, and you got like this cloud around, like this cloud of fogginess around you that you can't see and out. You feel that there's no like you can't talk to someone because they just wouldn't understand, or mm -hmm. it'd be shameful to your family or whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, if you don't talk about it, nobody's going to know what's going on. It's not going to get any better. And that's yeah. that's probably one of the biggest points. And like I said, as soon as I asked that question to myself, what what causes what did I like? What did I do? What could I have done? It made me start to really that fog start to slowly disappear, so then I could reach out and open up and tell my story to more people in 
the hopes that I could break through my own barriers and help other people in the, in the long term as well. Yeah. And I, I completely agree with you. I know, um, I guess I had a bit of a similar, as far as like it was my darkest days that really kicked me into gear and, um, uh, having all those sorts of contemplations and things as well. And, um, like in that moment, I felt like I didn't have anybody to talk to because in the, in the perception that I had was that nobody had the capacity to be able to deal with what I was dealing with. Now that's partly ego, but it's also maybe a bit of pride, but, um, you know, maybe just talk in and around that space. Now, I know you did say you had your uncle reach out to you who said, Hey mate, I've, I've been through it. I'm here for you, which is absolutely huge. Um, but then not everybody has that phone call that just says, Hey, I'm, I'm here for you. I can see what's going on. Um, what was some of the contemplation in your mind, not from like a suicidal thought perspective, but just a, how am I dealing with this? And, and that idea that nobody else can actually handle what it is that I'm going through. And then the transition to actually sharing it with somebody and the realization that and this is a bit of a um, assumption on my behalf. So correct me if I'm wrong. Um, that when you actually share what was going on, people were actually willing to actually listen and be there for you. Yeah. So um, the biggest thing was, is like, for me is what started all is someone actually um, committed suicide at my work. Oh, okay. And they did like this whole talk about it. And that whole side of it was like, you, you need to open up, even if you're just telling yourself, what's going on, just talking out loud is enough to sort of break through that. But the transition for me through that was just honestly seeing seeing the impact it made on other people, seeing that person's death. Um, and that sort of started to, to trigger points in me which were like, well, I don't want to cause that pain to someone that I love, um, which then... I started talking to more people in a sense where it was like, what do you think I should do? Um, who do you think I could talk to or something like that? Like, it was more so just my, my biggest thing with it all was um, finding who I could talk to that I felt like I could trust. Um, yeah. Cause like you say, it's, it's a very egotistical thing in yourself and a very lot, a lot of pride that holds you back from talking, especially as a man, like in the construction industry as well. It's a very big egotistical thing where it's like you, you always get told to harden up to do this, mm. um, have some concrete, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you never, never brought her up around that whole concept of being able to talk to someone. And it just took that, that point of finding someone who had witnessed that happen and opening up to them and as soon as it's it's a it's a sad moment that this happened for this guy um and his family but that moment actually allowed a lot of us in the workplace that we're at to actually open up about how we were feeling and what was going on and that we've been been in that spot before so it allowed it created a container for me to feel like I could talk. Mm. So with that, um, part of the message that I'm, I try to convey is the fact that, um, you know, vulnerability is strength rather than a weakness, which is the programming yeah. that I got when I was growing up as well. The exact same thing, you know, you know, as a guy, you don't share your emotions. You don't, yeah. Uh, yeah the whole tough enough. Yeah. Don't, I've, I've, don't. Yeah. yeah. But, like moving through like that space and like being in that, in that place now, I guess like what my experience was is once I had started to open up and actually convey what was going on, I almost found it um, addictive to actually speak more about what was going on and voice my inner um, thoughts. And as I started to become more connected with myself, like I wasn't judging whatever was going on. I was just able to be able to convey it a bit more and really yeah. find that strength within that vulnerability like just speak into that a little bit as well, because I feel that, you know, there is definitely a shift. There's definitely a lot more of an awareness around, um, you know, support for guys and, and things like this. And really that yeah. message of strength in being able to speak and things like that. What's the, um, the, the, the marketing campaign. It's not weak to speak or whatever, what it is like just, yeah. 
how do you see um, that image of a guy who's conveying what's going on? So for me, I um, like you say, because I've been through it and I've transitioned through it, if someone does come to me like that, I see them as a stronger, a stronger person than most others. Um, because like you said, they are being vulnerable. They're, they're accepting how they feel and they're trying to do something about it. Um, for me, the same thing, man. Like, if you're vulnerable, if you cry as a man, you used to always get shut down. But mm. these days, it's it's so much stronger to be in tune with how you're feeling and actually deal with it. Um, as I said, like, it, it's... I don't know, I guess my biggest thing for it would be that um, when someone did come up to me, I would be a lot more accepting of it because I have been there. I have gone through that transition and knowing that speaking your truth and having a container of trust is very, um, it's very needed in a sense where it, there's so many people that will try not, try not to talk and try not to be vulnerable because they're afraid that the other person will just give them shit, you know, in yeah. a sense, like they'll pay them out or, yeah. like you say, call, call them out on it rather than just accepting that they're going through some stuff. They just need someone to talk to. That doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that you can offer an opinion, like you need to offer an opinion or a guidance or anything. They just need to need someone to talk to just to get something off their chest. Yeah, and I think you right there, you just touched on a really big point for anybody who has somebody come up to them. It's not a case of, oh, this person's broken. How do I fix them per se? It's just really just having a listening ear that somebody can really just unload and just vent and just express whatever's going on and, and just be there for them in however way it's to show up. I think that is, you know, you just touched on a really massive point because I think also there's the other side of it. Like, sure, there's, you know the person who's going through it, but then also there's that receptive side as the other person who look may or may not have gone through something. So they may not be able to uh, empathize and understand that person who's coming to them with these concerns. Um, so I guess on the flip side of that is, you know, that's a really good valid point that it's not about trying to fix somebody or anything like that. If somebody does come to you and just want to express like yeah. there's been times where I've started and, I think this one's a good valuable point as well. Uh, there's been a couple of conversations that I've started, which is I don't need you to, to understand. I just need you to listen. So yeah, just sort of from my own perspective, just to anybody who may be watching, who's going through something that wants to reach out to somebody, you know, maybe s try and start the conversation with something like that, like prephrase it. Hey, I, because I think as you're saying, there's a, and I know this was going through my head as well when I didn't feel comfortable going to, to speak to anybody. I didn't want somebody to try and fix me. And I think that that is – maybe you can agree or disagree, if, you know, how, they, I, how you felt in that time. I definitely agree with that. There's um, – like you say, like we connected through knowing Blaze. Um, there's one thing that Blaze actually taught me is that nobody needs fixing because nobody's actually broken. They're just going yeah. through something. They're just growing. And that, that's the biggest thing is understanding that you can't, you can't fix people because they are just going through a challenge. It's, um, it's not your job to tell them what to do, to guide them through it. It's their job to, to sort of find their own guidance. But the, the first step is just to tell someone what's going on because that releases so much tension and so much anxiety in yourself knowing that you've actually – got the support there from someone that's just there to listen and like you say starting the conversation off like like what you said just uh, I don't I don't need you like I just need you to to listen to me I don't need you to understand what I'm going through I don't need your like your help getting through it I just need someone to talk to and that's yeah. that's sometimes all it takes yeah and be it in that situation or be it in some others I know when I've spoken something out that maybe I've been holding on to for a period of time and that itself has really had the power over me. As soon as you express the words, all of a sudden you shine the light on this thing that you had maybe so much shame. Like, and I'm not necessarily, it doesn't have to be the dark times. It could be just anything. Um, yeah. All of a sudden you take away the power that, that, that 
event happen or had over you because now you're being able to express it. And I think, um, you know, the more that you can convey what's going on, like every time, uh, you know, a little bit of it is, you know, has less of a hold upon you, uh, which I think is a big, powerful thing, powerful thing. And it's, it's, yeah. And I think it's, yeah, it's something like, that's good. Yeah, sorry, that's that, that's definitely true. That's like when um when I was saying in my my uh, at the start of this is that sometimes if you if you don't feel as though you can talk to someone else, talk to yourself. Just stand in the mirror and tell yourself what's going on, because actually by voicing it and getting it out in your own voice, it makes it more real. It releases that that thought process in your head, and it just it stops sitting in there. Because I, I used to do it all the time. You'd sit there and you'd procrastinate about it. You, you'd beat yourself up because you felt that way. You'd beat yourself up because you did something slightly wrong. It could, but because you were really in that hole, it just made everything worse. You just kept getting in that loop of just beating yourself up, and then you'd start beating yourself up for beating yourself up. But yeah. as soon as as soon as I started just saying it out loud, even to myself, like sometimes I would just like yell out in the middle of nowhere about like how frustrated I was about myself mm. and all, all it could be was just saying the F word or anything like that just to get a bit of frustration out. It was enough to to sort of release that tension in the back of your head. And when you're going through that depressive state, like I said, just, just saying it out loud. You don't even have to look at yourself in a mirror, just say it out loud. It, yeah. it makes the biggest of difference. Yeah. Um, something that I only really, uh, I guess, acknowledged probably a good couple of, a couple of years ago now, and it probably wasn't even, you know, it was probably only about two years ago, was um, I think there's a lot of people out there that have the focus that everything is positive. And I, look, I completely believe that there's a positive in everything. Like even the journey that uh, you've been through and the journey I've been through, you could look at the darkest of times and you could look at, you know, all of that, but yet you can still pull a positive out of those darkest times because ultimately without those, you wouldn't be where you are today and you wouldn't be who you are and you wouldn't be on the journey. Um, yeah. And I think just one thing that I, one trap that I fell into was not actually like trying to be overly I'm positive, like everything is positive and just having these blinkers on. And the issue that I found there was I kind of disconnected from myself and disconnected from reality. But then all of a sudden one day, and I can't remember why, I just started to acknowledge when something was wrong, you know, just simply acknowledging that this sucks right now. And I found that even just in that acknowledgement of the bad situation, it dissipated and it let go so that I could then look for the positive, the lesson, the learning and move through it. Yeah, I definitely understand that. Like you say, sometimes you've got to, um, you've got to actually acknowledge what's going on. Otherwise you're just going to continually draw a blind to it. And that's, as I like said, like when I was talking about the fog that you have when you're going through that depressive state, that's basically that you're you're trying so hard to show everybody that you're positive, that you're happy, that nothing's going wrong, that yes. you draw a blind to the fact that you're actually in that spot, that then it makes it that it'll just stay there. It's not going to go anywhere because you haven't officially acknowledged it. So with that, um, it just opens up a, like the question and the main question because obviously social media is so – such a trap when it comes to portraying the glamour life. And then uh, you've probably seen those ones of like the, um, the behind the scene type video where like somebody's maybe yeah. in a really rough spot and then all of a sudden they, they brush themselves off, take the selfie and then they're back into whatever, like, whatever sort of situation It's kind of like the, that uh, contrast between the two. And we can all get taught, caught in that trap of just posting the good stuff on social media. How did you find and how would you suggest that somebody actually takes a real like reality check for themselves and goes, Hey, I'm not in a good place right now. Because as you said, sometimes when you're in there and I know when I was in like behind closed doors, I was, I was so deep, dark and just it was no good. But then outside I'm forcing this smile to pr try and pretend like everything was okay. When in reality, I probably had stamped across my forehead that, you know, I'm not doing so well, but, it took, I was a, probably a slow learner in that space, but what would you recommend for somebody to be able to take that real reality check and go, hey, um, you know, things aren't going quite okay. 
right now and obviously that's okay let's move through it but just being real so for me um for me it was more so the heart feeling like i just felt it in my gut that because i was faking being happy so often outside of work like outside of like you say outside of your little comfort zone in your house in your bedroom whatever it may be i was forcing it for so long it sort of became a part of me, but then I realised that after getting to that breaking point where everything just sort of fell back in on itself, it hit me right in the chest, and and I just had this gut feeling. And um, for a lot of people, they they're not so in tune with it with that, but you can you can definitely tell when something's off if you don't feel right in yourself when you're trying to smile. Um, the biggest thing is like. When you when you got to force your smile, when you got to force you being happy, you can feel a pain in your stomach, in your chest, wherever it may be. Because I, I used to get abdominal migraines because of all of this as well. Um, I have hyperglycemia. Um, used to get set off every couple of months, um, and I I can't I can't get rid of the, the illness itself. But I knew that that was what was causing it. Um, I've had a few people that I've talked to that have had like really bad illnesses come up that only occurred when they went to a certain place or were trying to fake being a part of it or being happy or whatever. Like your body really does take a toll um, mm-hmm. due to your mental your mental health. And for me, that was probably the easiest way to really have that trigger point to really know that I was in that spot to go. I need to. I need to do something. I need to look after myself. I need, like, I need to go to the doctors or anything. It was just, it, it's hard. To, it's hard to explain how you feel internally when it happens. Um, but like you say, you you've probably had your own little point where you felt that you needed to open up to something. You needed to break through because you did have that feeling that just hit you at this one particular moment. And it just opened your eyes. Um, it is a very difficult thing to explain if you really haven't gone through it, you know. Yeah, yeah. For me, it was around probably my darkest day was whilst I've had suicidal thoughts and and things, especially through that period. I was dealing with a lot, um, losing my job the year before, relationship breakup. Um, supporting my grandparents at the time and, and my grandpa passing away and being a carer for her and all this sort of stuff. And um, I had my darkest day, which was I was sitting on the couch and I can remember it. And my whole energetic being was, was as though it was running out the, the door and over the balcony type thing. And um, whilst my physical body wasn't moving, there was just that part of me that was pretty much already gone. Um, yeah. And that scared the absolute bejeebas out of me as far as um a real wake-up call and yeah. for me that was when i started to i guess have my transition and my waking up phase to really master myself and i think uh, like you highlight some great things as far as that awareness goes like i know I, before all of that i was definitely not somebody who was self-aware and self-connected um sure I kind of knew myself as a nice person and all of this and people but then people have projected all of these other thoughts on me that I'm too nice and I'm too all of this um but I really didn't know who I was um so I I stepped away um from most people I isolated myself and to be honest most of it I actually did go through myself um for whatever reason but um I really set out to understand who I was as an individual so that I was more in tune. And, and that's the way I coach these days. It's more around self-awareness yeah. um, because I think that's such a crucial thing because as you're saying, your body tells you so many things. And if you can understand when the body is off and actually acknowledge what the yeah. message is underneath it, then you've got access to so much more. So I think with, like, with your experience from not being – maybe not being so in tune to then actually starting to listen to your body. Like how did that show up as well? Because, uh, you know, there's a bound to be people on here that are watching either the live one or the replay and, and not connected with themselves and just maybe thinking that that migraine or that back pain or the, 
the whatever it is is just normal and that's just what life is but uh hindsight i guess is we're not meant to be sick yeah so for me my biggest one was actually during work i was um I was in the middle of doing 16-hour shifts and that was my way of not going home because I didn't want to show up to my my partner that I was in that state. Um, yeah. And then because I was doing that and it put more of a toll on our relationship, I ended up collapsing at work because I wasn't eating. Jeez. I just physically was trying, trying to keep myself physically busy so I wasn't thinking or wasn't occupied with my own thoughts of – that feeling of being in that spot, all the dark thoughts and the thoughts of suicide, anything like that, I just kept working my ass off to just to sort of keep my mind preoccupied on other things by making my body do the work. And then what ended up ultimately happening was I was walking from one shed to another and I ended up, my legs just gave out from under me and I collapsed. I just landed straight on a, a big bag of tidal glue. And I sat there for like two hours. I could not, like, I just did not have the energy to move. I had to, like, get someone to go get me a chocolate bar and all that sort of stuff just to give myself mm. a little bit of energy to go sit down somewhere to actually have something to eat. Um, and that, that was my biggest, like, that was, that was the point where I really started to listen to what my body was telling me. Yeah. I'd been through a lot with my hypoglycemia and that, and I used to, like, listen to my body in that side of things, but I didn't actually, because I was just diagnosed with it as a kid, it was just a, an illness that I couldn't get rid of. So it, it just happened. It wasn't something yep. I could fix. It wasn't any, so I didn't think anything of it. But at this point, like I hadn't had an episode. I hadn't had a problem with it at all. I just collapsed out of nowhere from sheer exhaustion because I spent so much time focusing on everything else rather than trying to really focus on what was, what the real problem was or like what my body was telling me at that point. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, um, I actually, like my body's got to a point where my awareness has changed enough that I'm starting to understand when, when I'm really hungry or when I'm just thirsty, like your, your hunger is the same. Like that feeling of hunger and thirst is always the same feeling. It's yeah. just determining the difference of it. But understanding it better is helping me to realize so much more about myself and the potential that I actually have. Mm. Like, um, so starting back in September, I weighed 57 kilos. So I was really anorexic, basically. Um, yep. I've now started to listen to myself. I've now put on 10 kilos. Um, I'm healthier, fitter. I haven't had a hypoglycemic attack in about eight months. Um, awesome. I, I sleep less, but that's because I have so much more energy that I don't actually need to sleep as much anymore. Yep. And it's just, it's, it's the whole concept of now that I understand myself and what I was going through and accepted why that happened, I've started to really put more emphasis on myself to build myself back up, to get myself out of that spot. And much like you, like when that happened, I felt like my body had basically just, like my soul had just basically just run straight out in front of the truck that was parked at the back, you know what I mean? Like it, it felt like you just lost so much within yourself internally that then your body mm. just decided, oh, yeah, cool, the, that's gone, so we might as well give up too, you know what I mean? So, yeah. And I've heard many stories as far as people who don't listen to their body to the point where they do find themselves in hospital and, and things like that as well. And it's, um, there's also people who don't necessarily see that as a, anything wrong, um, which is a shame. And obviously we're all on our own journey and we'll find it at some point. And there was two things that we've sort of highlighted as we've been speaking as, you know, pinnacle things that actually helped you to shift, which was the first one, like taking ownership of it. Um, at, or like just this is going back in the conversation that we we're having it was like taking ownership yeah. of everything in your life and just acknowledging um the two and sorry accepting um you know they're two powerful moments and i can relate to very similar ones in my my own and i highlight those two as we've been speaking like anybody who's jumped on towards the tail end like if you want to start having a shift in your life you first got to take ownership of whatever's coming into your life and accept it 
And then once you've done that, obviously you can make that choice uh, to something new. And, you know, on that, like, where's your life moving in the direction now? Like, as you're saying, a lot of your work and what you're wanting to achieve as far as inspiring people who have been through some of the journey that you've been through or just other journeys similar, but just inspiring people in general. Like, where's, where's your life heading? So at the moment, I'm currently in the middle of doing something um, similar to what Live and Do. Um, I'm creating my own brand that's based around um, self-love rather than just direct mental health. Um, mental health is a big issue, but I believe that self-love is the biggest cause, like the lack of self-love is the biggest cause of depression. Um, so yeah. I want to sort of hit it at the source and build that that inner worth, that inner, inner love for yourself so you can fill up your own cup before you start trying to feed out and fill other people's cups up and that in turn will develop a, a better mental awareness because you'll be more aware of your internal self, um, yeah. of your physical self. Um, and for me, I thought that a fair bit because I'm not the biggest guy in the world, so I was always looking at the Instagram photos and going, oh, I've got to be i got to put on muscle, I've got to put on this, blah, blah. And now, now I don't care. I walk around and I'm just like, yep, cool. I'm awesome as myself. I'm yep. the best person. I'm the best retailer that I could ever be. Nobody else yep. can be me and it's the best way to be. So I'm doing that. Um, I'm also leaning in towards doing um, coaching and creating a program at the moment as well for bringing people together and presenting ways that people can overcome that and build a better self-love. Um, I'm also in the middle of talking with some people to sponsor some events, some like men's groups, some women's groups, like well, basically wellness groups that are like coaches and all that sort of stuff. Now, the ultimate goal for us, like for me as a whole, is I actually want to build through this business. I actually want to build a hub for people like me and you and for anybody else that wants to join, where you see a lot of office hubs and business hubs these days that are portrayed around entrepreneurs and freelancers and that, but I want to make one specific for people that are in the wellness industry. So you can run your programs your programs in a certain floor, so you've got like the nice big space to run your programs. You can still run your, your video calls, all that sort of stuff. It's got a little yoga retreat. It's got a meditation retreat. And just somewhere to go that has that energy that people know that they can just walk in there and anybody in there will be willing to have a chat with you if, you, if you're you having a shit day. Yeah, that's, and that's, that's huge. That's about. what I want to create. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's so, ultimately what I'm, what I'm trying to create around this world. Yeah, and having that awareness of, like, people know of it. So, as you said, like, they can go in there and talk to anybody and that, uh, yeah. you know, that would be... That'd be so powerful, and everybody being on the same page would be massive impact. And, and like I said, that, that's the biggest thing for it. It's not so much just to have like people working for me. It's like the building itself is for freelancers in this industry, for mm -hmm. entrepreneurs in this industry, just to yep. be there. So people like they've got that hub where people can go, and you can have your meetings, you can have your coaching calls, you can have your one on ones face to face. And like I said, it's just Someone could be walking past that has a really terrible day that's working in a C, like is a CEO that's working in the building next door and just happens to walk past, but knows by looking at the name that they can walk in there and just talk to someone. It doesn't have to be a shrink. It doesn't have to be a psychologist. It, like, you know, it doesn't have to be a doctor. It's yep. just someone, they know that there's someone there that's not going to judge them for what they're going through, for whatever they've done in their life, just someone to talk to. Yeah, that's huge. Just a nice safe space. So I want to take yeah. one step back and how do you define self-love? Self-love is basically, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a bit of a swear word here. Um, there's, a, there's a guy that gave me a picture and it's actually the, the word unfuckwittable. Mm -hmm. So basically it's the self-belief and self-worth in yourself that doesn't matter if anybody has an opinion about you. It doesn't, it doesn't affect how you feel about yourself no matter what. There's so much times where when you don't have that love, 
like that self worth or that self love that someone could say one word about you like oh those shoes look terrible or oh yeah. why would you get that haircut or so, something simple like that and you could take it to heart no matter what because you you just don't have it there like you you're trying to draw the love off other people you're trying to take the love off other people but the whole concept of filling your own cup up so that you're you cannot you you're basically unstoppable you cannot be moved you're like a mountain you're solid as a rock internally that means that 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 whole side of mental health will actually slowly dissipate because you've got so much belief and inner worth that nothing can affect that mm. and like I said it's a bit it's all about filling up your own cup and allowing the overflow to really portray onto other people yeah it's massive and huge and um, like on the concept of filling your own cup, like one of the sayings that really stuck in my head a couple of years ago was the whole putting an oxygen mask on first before you help others. You know, that whole thing that they say on the plane. And yep. there were some people that I was around uh, a couple of years back and that was a, a quote that they were saying all the time. And I was like, you know, I, I get it up here, but I don't get it down here. And, um, you know, finally starting to really understand the concept of filling your own cup first and, and giving from the overflow is uh, is a massive, huge thing. And, um, I think like, one other question in around that self love side, you know, like I know if I look back at my, my past self, it was a case of, I'm looking for that, that magic thing, which is just going to last a lifetime. And then eventually having a reality check and going, you know, this is a daily practice. So like, how do you cultivate self love for yourself? Um, I actually use, um, affirmations in the morning and the night that um our mate blaze gave me um, yep i'm doing a one-on-one with him at the moment and it's it's helped me a lot the this is a little bit vulnerable for me but um the first time i said it i burst into tears because i had never actually given myself any love before so as soon as i said it to myself the waterworks started couldn't stop it now I'm at the yeah. point where, like you say, it's a daily practice for me where I do I do it morning and night. And now that I do it, I smile and laugh about it. I laugh at myself knowing that, like, yeah, I'm awesome. Like, I'm perfect. I, I love myself with who yeah. I am right now. And due to that, I actually thought of a concept of um, what, the, what the word perfection actually is. Like I've always heard that people say that perfection doesn't exist and I'm starting to really understand that it does because right now I'm perfect as myself and you're perfect as Brett. You know what I mean? Like, and whoever else is watching, you're the exact version of yourself. Nobody else can be you. Nobody has your own thoughts. Nobody's been through the stuff that you've been through to get to where you are. So right now in this exact moment, you were absolutely perfect as you are doesn't matter if you want to evolve, you want to grow, you're not overly happy with your physical form or whatever it may be. The fact that you can start to understand daily that you are perfect in one, it, it only takes like two or three minutes just to sit there and really just believe that you are perfect in that exact moment of that time. And that alone, once a day, I mean, if you can't do it once a day, start with every couple of days, do something like that. It'll just create such a backlog it's such a habit in your head that you'll you'll actually start to believe it yeah and there's one thing i've i've heard a few times is that even if you don't believe it say it because eventually you'll you'll actually get to a point where you do start to believe it it'll you'll start to feel it and that's when you know that you really truly believe that you are perfect in the in the form that you are now yeah, and I think that's a really, really powerful concept to, to consider and combating that idea of per- perfection and just looking at the fact that we are perfect by who we are right now. Um, and, 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 like, does... and like I said, like, it's, like, like you were saying before, it's, a, it's sort of a way of taking that negative look on perfection and finding the positive twist in it. Mm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so what does... Uh, you know, you speak about that on a, on a daily practice and that sort of thing. Like, uh, and just for anybody who's watching and starting to think, you know, I 
realize that I don't necessarily love myself or have that connection or really want to um, strive to, to creating that, that deeper love and connection with myself. Like what is your, uh, if you want to call it a practice, if you want to call it a process, whatever you want to call it, like what does that look? Is that through meditation and sitting in that in the moment? Is it through looking in the mirror and just telling yourself like how does, how does it show, like how does it look and show up for yourself? So for me, it shows up that I look at myself in the mirror when I, when I say my affirmations. I stare directly into my eyes and don't look away because that way you're actually telling your soul, your your like consciousness, mm. yep. what what you're you want to believe or you will believe. You know what I mean? Um, and then it involves like I usually go out and it for about five five ten minutes. I sort of do like a bit of a bit of a meditation and a bit of deep breathing just to sort of center myself for the day um and then because i have a staffy i spend i spend a little bit of time just sort of sitting in her bed and just cuddling up to her and just like and just being present with her not yeah not just for myself but to show her that i'm there for her even if i've got to go to work or anything like that i know that sometimes people don't have the time in the morning to do it to do all of that because like most people, I do have a normal day job and I've got to get to work by six o'clock in the morning. So it does make it hard. But even just those affirmations in the mirror to myself is enough to kickstart my day. It takes mm. five minutes, sometimes even less. And all it could be is literally just saying the words, I am perfect. That, yep. that could literally all, all it be morning and night. Well, that took me, what, 10 seconds. Yeah. You do that a couple of times a day. And that alone will change your life. Yeah. I know I had people a couple of years ago point out the fact, like they obviously was put, spread across my forehead that I didn't love myself. And they were telling me to go and do that, like look in the mirror and tell yourself that you love yourself. And I was just like, you know, what? this is just a, this is a load of garbage. And like what sort of, yeah. cause I had the perception that, um, I don't know. These are the words that are coming up that, I'm human. I shouldn't have to do this. But then yeah. I don't. I don't know why that. But like, I guess I had that perception of who we are as individuals and people, and um, we shouldn't have to tell each other or tell ourselves that we love him. And I don't know why the human thing comes up, but maybe the some aspect of me thinks that I'm from yeah. another planet, which is probably true too. But anyway, um, the sure. um, but yeah, definitely looking in the mirror and actually having saying those things i know at the very very start i felt absolutely stupid and ridiculous saying it and yeah. and doing it and i was right there with you in that one <laughs> and i was just glad that i was living by myself at the time because i thought oh, gosh if somebody walks in and they see me staring in the mirror and telling myself that i love myself i was like what would people think and um you know it's interesting as well that we can also judge ourselves and our own actions when people aren't even around to judge our actions in ourselves. So uh, I guess that's just a random thing that just sort of came up. Um, yeah, no, I, do, I definitely know that feeling. Cause um, like I said, I've, I've moved back in with my parents because of the whole split up and everything. The first, first couple of times I did it, I was really like, Oh, I'll, I'll just wait till they go to bed. So I don't look like an idiot. Yep. Or like you, you start to get that judgment in your own head about what people would think of you. And you're like, when I first got, um, introduced to affirmations i was like i oh, only egotistical idiots do that like, you know <laughs> what i mean like that it was just that first thought like that's those easy egotistical gym junkies and all that sort of stuff that do all that and just stand in the mirror pumping their pumping their curls and just death staring themselves yeah and it's like i don't want to be that person and then yep. i sort of got not i wasn't wasn't for that I, I chose but i got invited to to step outside my comfort zone and give it a try and honestly, I've never looked back. It was mm. the best, the best time I've had just stepping out of my comfort zone. Just that once made the biggest difference. Yep. And like I say, sometimes it, you won't feel it straight away. You'll you'll see it and you'll think about why you're doing it, but you won't necessarily feel it in your heart straight away. Mm. But that will eventuate. Yeah. I know I've got into a habit now, pretty much any single mirror that I see, or if I see my reflection in the window or something like that, I'm maybe not verbally out loud saying it, but I'm definitely saying something to myself and connecting with me and being like, yeah, you got this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I do the exact same thing. Yeah, man. <laughs> my, 
my parents have caught me so many times. I'll be walking past the mirror or past the cars, and you see, I see my reflection in the window, and I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah, no, I'm looking good today. I keep working <laughs> and my parents keep catching me and having a joke about it. But yeah. It's it's it definitely becomes a habit that you do. But like I said, man, having that that self love just brings up so much because you you truly become who you are. You don't mm-hmm. you don't fear judgment of what you are, who you are, how you act, who you wanna be. Like nobody really judges you on it like even if they do, like I'm, I'm probably got people that judge me because of where they're at in their situation, but I don't let it get to me anymore. Yeah. I used to always be concerned about what they thought of me, all that sort of stuff about embarrassing the family or any anything silly like that. And I mean, I got, I got tattoos, and for me, for a little while, I was hiding them from my parents because of what they were going to say. To me. Yep. Like. My mum found out about it, burst into tears, and then she was so worried about what other people would say that I had to wear a shirt around certain people yep. so that they didn't see the tattoo for like five or six months. It like, yep. It's a perceptive perception that people, most people have, but like I said, man, as soon as you build that self-love, you, just, you don't care. You, yeah. you don't let judgment affect your inner being. You build confidence beyond anything. Yeah. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Yeah, I've got <laughs> when I, I got a tattoo when I was traveling uh, back in Europe yeah. and like many many years ago, and my mum came and picked me up at the airport, and I was the same sort of thought. I was going to hide it, and then I thought, I don't know, in the spur of the moment, I just went, "Look at this!" I figured I might as well rip the bandaid off straight away, and uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, she wasn't too impressed. <laughs> yeah. But so um, that's fun. Yeah, no, I was, totally I was like, I was lucky. Yeah. I was lucky enough. My dad took it pretty well. He just looked at me and just called me a dickhead and shook his head. And that was it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think I could probably got something similar from my old man too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so mindful, like, mate. I we could easily be talking for another hour or more. I, I have no doubts with that whatsoever, and I really do appreciate and honor you for stepping in here and being so transparent and honest and just vulnerable as you have been and and really sharing what's been going on for you and, um, you know, some of the internal thought processes and, and everything like that that's shown up and how you've moved through it all. So I have no doubt that somebody, if they're going through any is, anything, has got great value out of um, some of the content that we've shared in here. So, um, you know, and look, I'll speak on my behalf and I'm sure I can speak on your behalf if anybody is watching this. Uh, and they feel like they're going through anything and they re- they can resonate with either one of us, by all means, our doors are open as far as shoot us a message, reach out, connect. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm all for that, man. If anybody needs to, needs to get in touch with me, just hit me up. I'm more than happy to give you a hand just to, just to be someone to talk to. I, if you don't want me to give you any advice or any tips or anything, that's cool. But if you just want to talk, I'm here. Um, I'm actually going through a similar thing with my one of my aunties at the moment. I'm just here to help her out. She calls yep. me up every now and then to go talk to me because she's in a bad spot, and I just help her. I don't do anything any more than that. Um, yep. And I am honoured and very grateful to you as well, Brett, for inviting me onto here um, and helping me helping me step out of my comfort zone and helping me really share my story with more people in in hopes that it helps. Yeah, no, it absolutely will help. And I, I got the sense that we, we got into some touchy spots from the emotional perspective at some points there. So I appreciate you going there um, and trusting me because, as, as I said at the start, heck, the only conversation that we've had is a couple of text messages back on um, yeah. you know, Facebook chat. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, for you to jump that's on it, here yeah. in, in a very live public uh, forum, I don't take that lightly at, at all. I, I appreciate the trust that you have in myself and, you know, thank you for that. No, that's that's awesome, man. I, like you say, we we barely talked, and man, I I just felt that it's something I needed to do, um, not just for me, but for you and every, everybody that's watching. Um, and I am actually grateful that I I took this opportunity and did this because, it, like you said, the the trust I ended up getting out of you was awesome. Like no judgment, no nothing, and and that's that's ultimately what me and you are both in here for 
Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there's times as we we're going through there, like even I had a sort of a moment in my mind when you were talking about self-love and I was like, you know, how's this? Like two men on, on social media, very, very openly speaking about self-love and, you know, t crying and vulnerability and all of this side of things. And, you know, just even in that moment, my whole, uh, my being was just like, wow, this is, you know, I'm just so proud of both of us. It's it's pretty intense, man. It's like um, a couple of weeks ago, I um, I joined Blaze on one of his retreats that he's doing, and yep. um, went there eight eight complete strangers. I knew Blaze, and that was it. I rocked up there, camped out, and by the end of it, man, we were hugging each other, high five, and staring each other in the eyes. It was it was beautiful, but like like you say, man, it's something that nobody would think would make a difference but just the, just that alone made such a such an awesome brotherhood and it yes. was just fantastic yeah and like you say right now ha having that and opening up and being vulnerable live as two men just talking about that and talking about self-love and going deep into those spots is just something that it's just crazy man that that's that's where we're getting to now is that people are actually getting to the point where they are happy enough and open enough to actually allow people in to see that side of them to help for support. And, and it's really fantastic to see. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it definitely transforms some of the relationships around you as well. When you, when you have that ability to be able to speak openly and, and share and everything to that effect as well. So it's such yeah, a ripple effect. Yeah, that's for sure, man. So, in, in sort of closing, what's, uh, what's one key bit of wisdom that is coming through you right now to, to share to the, the viewers that are watching, like what's some parting words that you've got there? Um, I guess what's coming through me right at this moment is to, to shed that fear of judgment. Just mm. talk to someone, talk to yourself. Um, if you, like I said, if you're too afraid to talk to someone, Start by talking to yourself. Start bringing that self-love to you. Open up, accept what's going on in your life and just start trying to do something about it. You, you don't need to live in the shadows. There's people like me and Brett out here to help you to just lean on. There's plenty of others out there that like, if you guys don't resonate with either of us, there's so much more and so many more people out there that are doing the same thing to help people like you. And it's just a matter of shedding that fear of being judged and opening up and allowing the trust to flow. Yeah, man, that's, that's powerful. That landed right for me. So that's absolutely super powerful. Well, you have a, a fantastic evening and mate, I have no doubt whatsoever that this is a start of a, a brotherhood. That's for sure. So I really do appreciate you. Yeah, no, same with you, Brett. I'm so glad that you got me on this call. And like you said, I, I can see a brotherhood starting here, definitely. Yeah. All right, man. You take care and I'll speak to you soon. Yeah, same with you, man. I'll talk to you later. All right. Cheers, buddy. See ya.